How you guys doing? This is Abdul from Dynamic Tax. Uh, today we are going to talk about investment income. So in 2021, people made a lot of uh, income from selling stocks. So a lot of a lot of people have questions as to how this is going to impact their income tax. So real quick, so you have two types of investment income. Assuming we are just talking about um, securities right now, right? So you have short-term capital um, gains, which is basically any stocks that you sold within 365 days from the date of purchase, right? So let's say if you bought a stock today, you sold it three months from now, and you had a $3,000 gain, there would be $3,000 of short-term capital gain. Then let's say you have Microsoft that you have been holding for over a year, that would be considered long-term capital gain. So this is important because these two types of gains get taxed at a different rate. Long-term capital gain, always gets a better tax rate, right? So long-term capital gain, gain always gets taxed at either 0%, 15%, or 20%. Warren Buffett once said that it's unfair that my <coughs> secretary gets taxed higher than my tax rate. That doesn't mean Warren Buffett is saying that his secretary is making more money. What he's saying is that his total income is getting taxed at a lower rate than his secretary. So what does that mean? So short-term capital gain gets taxed at ordinary rates. That means whatever your salary is, let's say your salary is $50,000. So your <coughs> salary and short-term capital gain tax is getting taxed at the same rate, okay? Which could be 15, 20, 25, whatever the rate is. Then the long-term capital gain would be taxed at the lower of whatever your ordinary rate is. So let's assume this is getting taxed at 25%. The long-term capital gain, let's say you had $5,000, would be separately taxed at 20%. So what you need to understand is at the end of the year, you are gonna have a total income in this case of 58,000. So the main tax implication here is that your salary already has tax withholding from your W-2. But now you have this another $8,000 of income coming in that does not have tax withholding. So as a result, what's gonna happen is after you know all your deductions and credits and everything, it's possible you are gonna have a little bit of taxes due on these amount. So if you do have stock investments, if you do have gains, try to make sure you do tax planning because you wanna cover whatever the liability is at the end of the year. If it's 8,000, it's not significant, but if you have a huge amount, like let's say 33,000 coming in from short term, another 15,000 coming in from long term, these are huge income that is not taxed yet. So as a result- the carryover from last year? Okay, so that's a good question. So let's, in 2020, which was a bad year for you. Not 2000, let's say, let's assume from prior year you had losses coming in off, I don't know, let's say 50,000. Let's make it smaller just to make the numbers work. So let's say you had losses coming off of $10,000 from prior year. So this year you had an $8,000 gain. So what would happen then is this loss is gonna come in and it's gonna offset, offset the loss. In which case, you don't have to pay any tax on current year's income because your prior year losses offset the losses, right? On top of that, you have still have $2,000 left, which will go in and offset your $50,000 of salary, right? In which case, you would end up paying tax on $48,000. Now, on the flip side, if you did have a loss this year of, let's assume, I don't know, let's say 10 grand, right? So that means you have 10,000 from last year, 10,000 from this year, which is 20,000. Does that mean it offsets all of your 50,000? The answer is no. You could only take up to $3,000 of loss and the remaining 70,000 is gonna get carried over to the following year. This is quick, uh, short video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us. We'll uh, 